Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to travel to every planet in the solar system that has moons to see what a lunar eclipse looks like on each of them. We'll be using the Space Engine Planetarium as an example. Let's go! Right now, I'm on our planet Earth on the continent of Eurasia. There, you can see the moon. And right here, in this spot, you'll be able to observe the lunar eclipse very well. I'll speed up time by 100 times. And let me tell you, this lunar eclipse that I'm showing you will be a total lunar eclipse on Earth. It will take place on September 7th, 2025. So you can actually see how this eclipse begins. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Sun, Earth and Moon line up in a straight line, with the Earth positioned between the Sun and the Moon. And here you can clearly see the phase of the total lunar eclipse. Here of course in this particular planetarium example, the Moon looks this dark. But in reality, only during a total and complete lunar eclipse can the Moon appear a vibrant red. This happens because sunlight is effectively refracted in the Earth's atmosphere and then subsequently reaches the surface of the Moon, which gives it that distinctive reddish dark hue. But unfortunately, that's not the case here in the planetarium. It would be great if they could implement this feature. If you switch to auto mode, you can see that, unfortunately, nothing changes here either. So let's continue watching in HDR. And just like that, the moon is now fully and completely revealed. And the eclipse then ends. Let's head to the next planet. This time it's the planet Mars. We won't be traveling to Mercury or Venus because they don't have any moons. Obviously, a lunar eclipse is impossible there. But Mars has moons like Phobos and Deimos. So let's take a look at a Phobos eclipse. I'll switch to automatic photo mode. And as you can see, Phobos is already in Mars's shadow. So we can already watch the eclipse. Now let me rewind time a little bit. And look, you'll see it light up. This is the moon Phobos. There, see, it just lit up. So let's pause it like this and take a look at this. The light from Phobos and now it's about to enter Mars's shadow and simply disappear. That's the moon in the sky. Let's watch this. It glows and then BAM! The light vanishes. I rewound time again and now let's zoom in there and I'll show you in detail. We're running at one second per second so it's real time mode. There's no need to speed it up too much because first Phobos is very small and second it's very close to the planet and it orbits Mars very quickly and now the eclipse should be starting any moment. The eclipse is starting, you can very clearly see for yourself how Phobos's brightness slowly begins to fade and it looks so truly unusual and quite magical. In general, lunar eclipses are really quite fascinating indeed. And now Phobos has completely disappeared. Now Phobos is just starting to come out of Mars's shadow. That's what a lunar eclipse looks like on Mars using Phobos as an example. Yes, it stayed in Mars's shadow for quite a while. We really had to wait. So that's basically how it is. Next up is Jupiter. Let's fly over to it. Here you can clearly see its four main moons. Now I'll speed up time and we'll see which of these moons will be the first to enter Jupiter's shadow. Okay, stop. There it is. That's Io. Well, let's take a look at Io then. So I'll descend to the dark side of this gas giant right into its upper atmosphere. Io is right over there. I'll zoom in with the telescope and let's see what a lunar eclipse looks like using Io as an example. Time is sped up by 10 times and meanwhile the eclipse has already truly started. Wow, it looks quite amazing. Right in the shadow zone we can already see active volcanoes on Io. And the eclipses are really fascinating. And now total shadow. Io is completely in Jupiter's shadow and this is what it looks like during a total eclipse. Incredible! I'll also turn on the automatic photo mode. This is how everything looks in this mode. Switching HDR back on. Time has passed and finally Io is starting to come out of Jupiter's shadow and our lunar eclipse is ending. And that's how interesting it was. Now let's see which of Jupiter's major moons will be the next one to enter Jupiter's shadow. And we'll watch it as an eclipse as well. Well, I think that's it for now, folks. That's Ganymede. So let's take a look at Ganymede then. Here I am again in the upper layers of Jupiter's atmosphere on the dark side. There's Ganymede over there. I'll zoom in again with the telescope and let's see what Ganymede's lunar eclipse looks like. 
Ganymede's eclipse is beginning. Ganymede has entered Jupiter's shadow. The time is sped up 30 times, this is how it looks. Well, it seems similar to what happens with the moon on Earth. This is what the total eclipse phase looks like. I'll also turn on the automatic photo mode. Here, everything is just as dark. Let's fly to the next planet. That will be Saturn. I think many people are curious to see an eclipse of Titan, Saturn's most interesting moon. Well anyway, it's just now moving towards Saturn's shadow. Let's see now if it will dim or not, but it should simply disappear. For now, it's still glowing. You can see that it's glowing. If it enters Saturn's shadow, it should dim completely. It won't be visible. Alright, now comes the moment of truth, right on the shadow. And you see, it disappears. Yes, you really can see an eclipse of Titan. So, moving to the dark side of Saturn, right here, you can clearly see the shadow in the rings where Saturn is casting its shadow. I've descended into Saturn's upper layers. And let's see, where is Titan? There is Titan. I'm zooming in with the telescope. And this is how it looks from Saturn's surface. The eclipse is beginning, time in the planetarium is sped up 30 times, and this is how the shadow moves over Titan. Cool, here, Titan already has an atmosphere, and I think it's going to be interesting. This will be an interesting eclipse, not like with the moon, Ganymede, or even Io. Yeah, guys. Let's turn on the automatic photo mode. In this mode, everything looks even cooler and more magical. Let's go back. HDR. We'll switch and see how it looks. Well. This eclipse is really awesome. Auto mode again. Now, when Titan is completely covered by Saturn's shadow, I think it'll be interesting to see if anything is visible at all. Well, that's how everything basically gets hidden. And in the end, it's just one solid black spot. Unfortunately, nothing is visible. And now it's daytime on Saturn, or whatever that is. So, basically, Titan has disappeared beyond the horizon. Let's take a look at one more moon. Here's one that ended up in the shadow. Wait, what's this moon here? This moon has come into view. That's Enceladus. Well, I think we can take a look at Enceladus. Once again, Saturn's night sky. Here we see the rings breaking off as they fall into the planet's shadow. And that's where Enceladus is. I'm zooming in, let's take a look. Here's Enceladus. It's quite a bright moon. Really very bright. For example, in Space Engine. And here comes the shadow moving in. The time speed in the simulator is tripled. And now, a total lunar eclipse of Enceladus is right in front of your screens. And as you can see, even if you set it to automatic photo mode, you can make out a bit of a silhouette, but your GR shows it even better. Still, Saturn illuminates this moon more here, because this moon is one of the closest to Saturn. And now, as time passes, Enceladus begins to emerge from Saturn's shadow and becomes fully visible again. So that's roughly what lunar eclipses look like on Saturn. Now let's fly to the next planet, Uranus. Well guys, I think we're going to run into some problems here because the moons here orbit like this. Due to Uranus's tilt of almost 98 degrees, they orbit along the equator. So it turns out that at least at this point in Uranus's orbit, there are no lunar eclipses. As you can see, nothing falls into the shadow. So guys, right now in our planetarium it's the year 2050. I fast forwarded the time. And in this year, Uranus, one of its moons and the sun line up. And here you can actually see a lunar eclipse. Here we have one of its moons, which is currently in the shadow. This is Titania, the largest moon of Uranus. So descending to the dark side of the upper layers of this gas giant's atmosphere, here I am in the upper layers of Uranus. And that's where Titania is located. Yes, you can't see it right now, because it's currently in the shadow. That's why I rewound the time back a little bit. I zoomed in with the telescope and sped up time by 30 times. And now the Titania eclipse has begun. Since there's no atmosphere here, everything is very similar to what happens with the moon. The total eclipse is over. Titania is starting to emerge from Uranus's shadow. And that's what these lunar eclipses look like, using Titania as an example. On the planet Uranus, other moons will look about the same, since they're more or less similar in that they don't have an atmosphere. Next, let's fly to the last planet of the solar system, Neptune. Here, I'm very interested in Triton. Will we be able to see its eclipse? So, I'm speeding up time. The red line is Triton's orbit, but let's see if it will pass into the planet's shadow. Well, as we can see, it doesn't. Still, there was a bright spot, which means it didn't pass into the shadow. 
Let's see how Neptune passes in front of the star. Well, yes, you can see that everything here is really far from being in a straight line. Sun, Neptune and Triton. Here too you have to fast forward time and look for the right point in Neptune's orbit around the Sun for this to happen. Guys, I kept fast forwarding and fast forwarding, eventually catching a moment. Now, in the planetarium it's already the year 2291. And we see that Triton is completely in the shadow, which means we'll be able to see a Triton eclipse. Descending onto the dark side of Neptune, its upper atmosphere looks like this on its surface, and this is how Triton appears. Yes, I rewound time a little bit back, Triton is in full phase. I'm zooming in with the telescope and this is how it looks from Neptune's surface. Time is sped up 30 times, the eclipse is already starting and the shadow is moving across Triton's surface. Triton has a thin atmosphere, it's denser than that of Jupiter's moons. Alright, let's turn on the automatic photo mode. No, there's nothing particularly new here, but let's watch the eclipse in this mode. And in fact, the total phase of the eclipse is about to begin. Here too we can see a total eclipse. And once again, everything is dark. It's a pity that Space Engine doesn't have a feature where, during lunar eclipses, the eclipsed moons are tinted in different shades. So time has fast forwarded and Triton is starting to emerge. Let's switch to HDR mode. Basically, Triton is coming out and leaving Neptune's shadow. And this is what a lunar eclipse looks like from Neptune. And finally, let's visit the dwarf planet Pluto along with its double component in the binary planetary system, Charon. And let's try to observe an eclipse of Charon here. Well, here too guys, it won't be that simple because Pluto has an inclination of 118 degrees. Because of this, Charon's orbit looks like this and not in the same plane as the Sun, roughly speaking. You can see for yourselves, I'll show you now. There's no way a lunar eclipse can happen here, as you can understand. There's no single line of Sun, Pluto, Charon. Guys, I fast forwarded time. Look at Charon. And right at this point in Pluto's orbit, it's possible to line up this single line. Sun, Pluto, Charon. And as you can see, Charon enters Pluto's shadow. And in fact, we'll be able to see a Charon eclipse. I'm descending to Pluto's dark side. This is how everything looks on its surface. Let's see how Charon looks. Here, Charon appears quite large in the sky. Let's turn on HDR mode. Auto mode. Let's leave it on auto. And here you don't even need to zoom in because Charon gets very close to Pluto. Now the eclipse is about to begin, watch closely. Time is sped up 1000 times and here we have a partial lunar eclipse. But I've always shown you total eclipses, so let me show you a partial eclipse at least once. This is precisely how it looked here from the very surface of Pluto. Now, I will rewind time and show you a much closer up view. I am zooming in with the powerful telescope, so let's take a much closer look. That's the kind of journey we had today. We saw what a lunar eclipse looks like from each planet. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and leave a comment about which planet's lunar eclipse you liked the most. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the universe.